For me, the important thing is not whether you're radical or not, but whether you're right or not. You know, I'm, I'm just looking for the truth in my life. Father Robert Sirico is an American Catholic priest who argues that free market capitalism is compatible with the principles of Catholic social teaching. That is a highly unconventional argument, and over the last two decades, it's made Father Sirico and his think tank, the Acton Institute, highly controversial within the church. Just this month at the U.S. Bishops' Meeting in Baltimore, two bishops brought up the Acton Institute on the floor of the General Assembly. Just a suggestion that in terms of maybe a consultant for the committee, maybe look to the Acton Institute as a possible consultant for the committee. There are those, like the Acton Institute, which we heard earlier, who are saying that Aurero Novarum is a time frame encyclical. It is not applicable today. And yet every pope from Leo XIII to Benedict XVI has insisted upon the right to unionize, the right to collective bargaining. Father Sirico says the Archbishop's criticism of Acton was based on a misunderstanding of remarks the priest had made about the 19th century papal encyclical, Rerum Novarum. Rerum Novarum is applicable today because it, it, it articulates timeless truths of the Catholic faith and the insight and the expertise that the church has into the human condition. Of course, in one sense, it's historically bound because uh, Leo XIII is addressing himself to the new things that are going around him at the time that he writes the encyclical. Blessed John Paul II updates Rerum Novarum. So the very fact that uh, a successor to Leo says we have to now update Rerum Novarum to take into consideration what's going on with the collapse of real socialism uh, recognizes that there are features of any given encyclical that are bound by its historical context. The Institute was founded to help bring uh, sound economics to good intentions. That's kind of the, the slogan that we use, our elevator speech, as it were. Uh, a lot of people have very good intentions, but they don't know how to achieve it. And they sometimes will attempt to achieve it by ignoring economic realities to the, um, to the harm, unintended harm of other people. For example, in the case of healthcare, uh, what is the church's concern about healthcare? The church's concern about healthcare is not this or that institution or this or that policy. It's the person who's vulnerable, who is in need of some kind of healthcare and their access to that healthcare. Uh, it is my prudential opinion that I believe as a Roman Catholic and a priest that I have the right to argue for that it is not prudential to see the government as the main source of the provision of health care for a variety of reasons, one of which is that it cuts out the knowledge base that a uh, competitive pricing market in health care uh, can give people for their benefit by reducing the uh, cost of services and the, the whole knowledge of what is really needed. The church doesn't uphold or endorse or canonize any economic model. And it would be a misreading of my book to say that capitalism is the economic system, moral economic system. It is clear that both Benedict and John Paul uh, say that the problem of capitalism is not the economic system as such, but the distorted values that may be present uh, among actors in a market economy. I think the problem that comes from capitalism is when it is too narrowly focused on capital, when it's not seen in the broader context of human action in the economic sphere, meaning that human beings bring all of their own values and their formation, their moral formation with them into the market economy, which then in turn dictates, if I may use that phrase, dictates to them what they should invest in and what they should buy and sell or what they shouldn't. 
I, I think what's happening right now in the Catholic Church in the United States, and, and to some extent around the world, is that there is a new way to speak about Catholic social teaching. And that's exactly what Catholic social teaching allows us to do. And you see bishops, you see lay people, you see academicians uh, having this vibrant debate.